How's it going, everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech, and also to my look at the ASUS ROG Strix Z790E paired up with not the i9, but the i7-13700K. A great combo between a price, a performance, but at a pretty high price point. Now, I've already done an unboxing video on my second channel for the sports. If you want to see that, you can definitely check that out. But now I'm adding some performance benchmarks and also power and attempts as well. Also, if you would rather go with the Z690 route, because of course you can pair up with the new 13th generation with the previous Z690 boards, I have already done my review and also unboxing of the previous Z690 board. But in that review, I paired up with the i7 12700K. So you can mix and match all of the performance numbers and everything. So you do have that option if you want to save a bit more cash and rather go that route instead. Now, pricing wise, the E is retailing for $500, which is slightly more than the previous Z690E at launch. And for Year in South Africa, it's around 12,000 Rand, but currently there's no stock available. Now, for the i7 13700K, it is retailing for around $440 or 10,000 Rand. However, if that is a bit too much for you, you can also get the i5 13600K paired up with the ASUS Prime Z790A board, which is around $600 for the pair or 14,000 Rand. So you do save a bit there. I just so happen to have a video out with that combo. So if you want to check that one out, I will also leave a link in the video description for that. Now as for the design of the new E board, it does keep the same black styling from majority of the ROG boards although you do have a white version available as well, with, which is the A board. So you do have that. But also it does keep the aggressive look with plenty of heat spreaders for your M.2s and all over your chipset. The VRM heat spreader is also large with a heat up pipe connecting the two for better heat dissipation. And also everything has some kind of cool graphics on it to make it a not look too boring. I do kind of like the established in 2006 on the M.2s. That's again, make it a bit more unique and not too bland. Now also you do have your ROG eye here on the IO cover, which does light up, but also you do have a cover here covering the eye somewhat. It does glow through that, but uh, you can remove that if you wanted to. But I do think that it gives a bit of a different styling towards the board and not just a standard ROG glow there. So I think it does look a bit more unique. Now, before we continue, are you actually planning to upgrade to the new Z790 platform and the new 13th generation CPUs? Or are you sticking with your current setup? Maybe switching to something else instead? So let me know down in the comments below because I'm pretty curious to find out what everybody's planning to do. Now, the new Z790 platform does feature the same LGA 1700 socket as we got on the Z690 platform again. And both do feature interchangeable CPUs. As for the CPU that I paired up with the board, it is of course the i7-13700K, which has 16 cores and 24 threads eight performance cores and eight efficient cores, as well as a 54 megs of a cache. The performance cores has a base clock of 3.4 gigahertz and a boost of 5.4 gigahertz for a single core, while the efficient cores has a base clock of 2.5 gigahertz and a boost of 4.2. Now with it, of course, being a K model, you do have the option of manually overclocking your CPU, but if you're just lazy or, or if you don't necessarily know how to overclock, you of course can just rely on thermal velocity boost and also turbo boost at max 3.0, or you can just use the AI optimization in the BIOS and that will automatically overclock your CPU as well to, to get the best clock speed at the temperature the CPUs are running. And it's just as easy as clicking once and you're gonna get some extra performance out of that. And I did a quickly try it and I got a boost up to 5.5 gigahertz, but it wasn't completely smooth sailing because of temperature. So we'll get into that a bit later. Now as for the VRMs, it is an 18 plus a 190 amp phase digital VRM setup, which is a plenty enough for the i7 13700K or even the i9 13900K boosting to 5.8 gig or, so, or even over that. Now, just make sure that cooling is good enough because especially for the i9, which is not necessarily this one, uh, that thing does run extremely, extremely hot, but also we'll get into the temps 
for the i7 as well a bit later. Now moving on to a memory, the E does support a maximum of 128 gigs on the four dual channel DDR5 dim slots with an overclock up to a very tasty 7800 MHz with XMP. Now if you just want to stick a DDR4 in there, you only have the Strix Z790A as an option or you have the option of going for some of the tough boards or the prime boards. But for our review here, Kingston sent over their a Fury Renegade DDR5 32 gig kit with speeds up to 6800 mega transfers per second and it looks to be so new that it's not even available on uh, Kingston's website at the moment there's only the 6400 um, mega transfers ones available and not the 6800 so We'll probably see those ones relatively soon, but they do perform quite nicely, so I'm happy about that. Now, if you want to see a more motherboard or CPU video, subscribe because I do have a couple more to come on the main channel here and also on the second channel as well, with all of the links linked in the description below. Now, dropping down, we have three PCI Express slots, with the top slot being a PCI Express Gen 5x16, while the other two are full size Gen 4x4 speed ones. Also, so the top slot does have feature ASUS armor design for better durability, especially for these crazy heavy RTX 4000 series cards. Now there's also the quick release button that makes it so much easier to quickly just pop up your CPU just by pressing the button. And I do also like the new design of the Q release button. Instead of opening it up, it actually slides sideways. So that does also make it a bit easier. Now as for storage, you do get a whopping five M.2 slots with the top slot being a Gen 5 and the other Gen 5. Four. All five are under heat spreaders, especially for the top M.2 having a bit more of a beefy cooler design, which hopefully will keep the Gen 5 M.2s in check once they're actually available, uh, because I think those ones will also run quite a bit hot at crazy speeds. Now also all five do feature ASUS's Q latch release lock, which makes just installing M.2s again so much simpler. Now something worth mentioning is that if you do use the top M.2 slot, the top a Gen 5 piece express slot will run only in 8x speed, which is still comparable to Gen 4 or 16x, but they do share a bandwidth, so just something to keep in mind. Now as for your I.O. on the side here, you do get a good set with an HDMI 2.1 port, DisplayPort version 1.4, your clear CMOS, BIOS flashback, 4 USB 3.2 Gen 1 type A ports, 7 USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, or only one of them being a type C a one USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 20 gigabits per second at type C port, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, your Wi-Fi 6E, your standard six audio connections, and unfortunately no Thunderbolt port directly on the IO at the back here. Now, as for the on board headers, you do have your dual eight pin CPU power, your Q code, your power button, your Q LEDs, your alternative PCI Express mode switch, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 headers, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 type C header that does also support power delivery of 30 watts. So if your case does support that, you can get a fast charging for your mobile devices and so on, which is pretty handy. And also your two USB 2.0 headers. Now also you do have your Thunderbolt or USB 4 add-on header as well, which is handy, but it's an extra device needed. And then three, a five volt and a one 12 volt RG B headers and finally your eight PWM fan headers. Now, just before we get into the fun stuff, if you have any idea of a product you would like me to feature either in a video comparison, a review, unboxing, whatever, then tag me and the brand in a tweet and I'll see if I can get that arranged for you. Now, getting into our CPU benchmarks, the i7 13700K, just like the i9 13900K is fast. Very, very fast, but keeping it cool is a bit of a problem. It's not as fast as the 13900K, but easily beats out the i9 12900 that I tested previously and is a good chunk ahead of the previous i7 12700K which I already thought was a beast of a CPU and I personally have it in my personal setup and I'm very much happy with that but this one is already so much faster so yeah 
Intel did a pretty good job with it here. However, where Intel didn't necessarily do a very, very good job is keeping the temperatures uh, quite low. So I paired the i7 up with my Waterforce Exo240, which is a 240 millimeter AIO, and it's a pretty good uh, cooler but it had extremely a hard time keeping the temperatures in a check. Now it is worth mentioning that my ambient temperatures was slightly higher than normal at 25 degrees. It's a pretty hot summer day here and I didn't have air cooling in the room so that also plays a part. But even with that, with the fans also set on a max at 3200 RPM, it usually hit the high 90s where of course it did start to thermal throttle, but luckily not by too, too much, by between 100 to 200 megahertz. But of course you're not getting the full performance that you could from your CPU and especially if you want to overclock it a bit more, um, I did have a problem with that. I did use Asus's AI overclocking to get a 5.5 gigahertz but of course the temperature was the limiting factor there. <laughs> but now when it came to games, it ranged around 50 to 70 degrees and it didn't thermal throttle there, so that was okay. Now just like with the i9 3900K, it does look like a minimum of a 360 millimeter rad is needed or if you have extremely low ambient temperature, which here in South Africa uh, is pretty hard to come by. Now as for our VRM attempts, no problem here with it just peaking at around 52 degrees. Now as for the power draw for the i7 13700K, it does have a base TDP of 125 watts and a boost of 253 watts, which from my testing looks to be spot on. On a stock, it averaged around 14 watts on idle and around 240 watts in a games and it peaked at 255 watts on stock again. I didn't get any power draw when over clocking as again the temperatures was just too high there. So with all of that out of the way, the i7 13700K certainly did not disappoint, beating out the 12700K by a decent amount. And I just wish that I actually had a 360 millimeter AIO to keep the temperatures in check to really see the performance numbers that the CPU can actually get, especially because I want to do some overclocking to get at that the CPU to that 5.5 gigahertz stable. I definitely want to see the performance numbers there, but unfortunately I didn't have one available. So that is unfortunate. I'll see if I can get one in the near future. But uh, as for the Z790E board, <laughs> There isn't really anything to complain about. The IO is pretty good. VRM temps was nice and low. Memory speeds are high and you do also get plenty of storage options. Plus the future proofing for Gen 5 SSDs as well. So just overall a great high end option if you want to go that route. And again, if you would rather go for the i9 13900K, you do also have that option. And I have done my review on that CPU. And I think the board is going to be a perfect combo for that one as well. Just depends if you have all of the cash laying around for that. But like I mentioned in the beginning, we do have the more budget option available with the i5 and also the Asus Prime board. So again, links in the video description for that. But now that's pretty much it for my look at the ASUS RT Strix Z790E Wi-Fi board. I also pair up with the i7-13700K. Just need to remember all of the numbers. It's so much usually. But so a big shout out to ASUS South Africa sending the board and CPU over for a review and also Kingston for the memory. If you guys want to get it for yourself, I will leave links in the video description and also the CPU and also some of the other options as well, the Z690E board up also so you do have plenty of options to choose from also if you have any questions leave a comment down below but probably the best way is either to tweet at me or join the discord server link below where i or somebody else will be able to help you out with some of your questions but now that's pretty much it i do hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please like subscribe and comment like always i'll check all of you next time cheers guys